I collect several things including old calculating machines, old electronic calculators, vintage computers, and several other things, but I also have a fondness for uh, magnetic toys and high voltage equipment, and I have a small collection of uh, vintage style high voltage equipment, but I was missing a Tesla coil and uh, I've actually arranged to buy a fairly nice Tesla coil kit from a company in New Jersey but uh, in preparation for that I thought I would build one of the um, many small mini Tesla coil kits that are available on eBay and from Amazon and other sellers. Uh, in particular there's one that seems to be sold by everybody and it's usually called the mini Tesla coil plasma speaker kit and uh, it's a very low powered, very low cost, usually less than $20 US. And in addition to being a Tesla coil that will generate the uh, Corona, uh, it also can be modulated at audio frequencies so that the Corona uh, produces uh, audio tones and it essentially acts as a plasma speaker. So uh, I thought I would share some things I learned about this kit uh, for others who might be interested in building the same thing. First off, as with many inexpensive kits coming from China, they seem to always go by boat, so it takes a good month, sometimes more. Uh, in fact, in the case of this particular package, it took a month to arrive and then I found out that it had been sent back by the local post office because while it had a tracking barcode that only got it to the town and they had never printed my street address on the label so it got sent back and then it took another month uh, before the seller could get me a replacement so quite a wait and uh, you know I think many people would rather spend a few dollars instead of the free shipping and have the thing sent by airmail but maybe that's just me just like most of these kits, you end up with a Ziploc bag full of parts. Not like a Heath kit where everything's packaged in certain ways. It's just everything thrown into a bag. And this is adequate for most things. It's a small kit. There aren't that many parts. Uh, the instructions with my kit was a single sheet printed on both sides. Everything in Chinese. And uh, there was a schematic in here, but no assembly instructions. There were a couple photos of the circuit board which you could use as a parts layout diagram. And uh, I was able to find a link on one of the sellers that was selling these through Amazon. They had a link on the Amazon listing to a location where you could download a set of English translated instructions, which doesn't have as much stuff on it as the Chinese version, but uh, at least it's in English, although I found it to be very poor English and very difficult in many ways to figure out what it was actually saying. The kit uses a double-sided printed circuit board of pretty decent quality with a solder mask and silk screening. Uh, most of the text on the circuit board is in Chinese, but the part numbers and part values for all the parts are uh, in English essentially, or at least in uh, Western characters instead of Chinese. And that allows the circuit board silk screen to act as an assembly diagram. It shows the part orientations and the part values. And if you have any savvy with electronics, it's not too hard to put this together. Uh, there's only four resistors, a couple of LEDs, a red one and a white one, uh, two capacitors, uh, two transistors. One of them is a MOSFET and the other is just a regular bipolar transistor. Both of them mounted on heat sinks. Uh, there's a uh, barrel jack for the power and a uh, stereo eighth inch or I think it's what 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo phone jack like you'd use on a, a MP3 player or a, a mobile phone or something like that to get the audio signal into it. The uh, power transistor used as a switch for the oscillator on the Tesla coil primary is a BD243, just a high-powered bipolar transistor. 
and uh, the kit comes with a little envelope of uh, silicone thermal grease uh, for the uh, junction between the transistor and the heat sink which is furnished and the heat sink has uh, printed circuit board solderable pins on the bottom so that the uh, you don't need any hardware to mount the heat sink to the circuit board you just solder it on the power source for the Tesla circuit is a power MOSFET a uh, part number 80NF70 and that is also attached to a heat sink just like the bipolar transistor and mounted to the circuit board. There is no specified order of assembly but uh, I chose to mount the LEDs sort of towards the end and uh, the assembly instructions <laughs> such as they are don't tell you which LED is which but the accompanying photos on the single sheet of instructions do suggest that the power LED is red and the other LED which has no defined purpose is a white LED. Uh, I would call that the modulation LED but it doesn't seem to change brightness no matter how you modulate it so that's maybe not really the right word. Unlike some Tesla coil kits the coil on this kit at least the secondary with all the windings is already made which is an, a convenience for sure. Uh, it has the magnet wire just wrapped and then there's a little tape at the end and there's a plastic sleeve slipped over it which offers protection and helps keep the coil from unraveling. Um, the ends of the wires are taped over with little stickers to hold them down. There is no definition for which end of the coil is which. It seems to be something that doesn't matter. And uh, the wires are not pre-stripped so and the instructions don't mention it but you have to very carefully scrape the insulation off at least the end that's going to be soldered to the circuit board and the wire is so fine it's like a piece of thread or smaller almost like a human hair and so you have to be very careful to strip it without actually damaging the wire and uh, I also stripped off the insulation at the top end of the coil where the corona will be formed. Now there's nothing that says how you're supposed to attach the Tesla coil to the circuit board. Uh, there is a little piece of amber colored plasticky stuff in the kit which doesn't seem to have any purpose that I could tell and it kind of resembled hot melt glue so I assume that's what it was. I thought maybe you're supposed to melt it uh, and use that to attach the coil to the board. Maybe it has some other purpose but uh, it wasn't apparent to me. Anyway I didn't like the way it worked even though when I melted the end of it with a lighter it did form a sticky substance which could have been used as glue but it would have been very hard to do a neat job so I just used some regular uh, household epoxy to attach the uh, coil to the circuit board. The primary winding of the Tesla coil is not pre-done for you but it only consists of one loop and it's a heavier wire there's a fair amount of current that will go through it and it's already pre-stripped uh, in some of the kits that I've seen people build online but in my case it was not pre-stripped so I had to take care of that with my wire stripper and you don't want to cut too much off because it's cut to exactly the right length and if you strip too much back then you're gonna have some exposed wire that you didn't mean to because you can't just stuff more of it into the circuit board up until the insulation hits the board it, it'll be too short to do that so it is really just enough length to loop once around the coil and go into the board and that's it. There were a few errors that I found the uh, 80NF70 uh, MOSFET um, even though if you assemble it according to the markings on the circuit board that show the outline of the part it'll work but if you actually go by the pin designations on the circuit board silk screen those are backwards here's a, a sketch of the correct pin out taken from the uh, data sheet on the 80 NF 70 and then here's a picture of the bottom of the circuit board showing the uh, gate drain and source 
uh, pins as marked on the silk screen, and then my uh, little drawn in uh, using a Sharpie marker correct designations. I've brought this to the attention of the seller, and they said they would forward it to whoever they get these things from. Maybe they can correct the documentation on the next production run. And there's also an error in the schematic that's provided. And I should note that the Chinese version and the English version of the schematics that I got have subtle differences in the schematics. But uh, both of them were incorrect. And I spent some careful time wringing out the circuit board. And uh, there is definitely a mistake where one of the LEDs is shown in series with the... Uh, uh, secondary of the coil, which it most certainly is not. Uh, it's as shown here in my hand-drawn schematic. Uh, again, you don't need this to assemble the kit and have it work, but if you want to understand how it works or troubleshoot it, having a bogus schematic as provided by the sellers isn't very helpful, uh, so I've included this schematic here. Uh, an important point to make is that this kit does not come with a power supply and it requires to operate correctly uh, 24 volts DC uh, and that needs to be at at least 2 amps capacity. Uh, most power supplies people have lying around, including most bench supplies that hobbyists will have, cannot deliver that much current at that voltage. Uh, and uh, it will not work correctly with much less voltage and according to the English translation of the instructions it will not work adequately with less than 2 amps. Uh, so I searched around and I found this power supply from DigiKey. It's actually a generic brick power supply of the kind you usually use for replacing a laptop computer power supply and it, it has the requisite um, voltage and I believe it's 2.1 amps capacity so the DigiKey part number is shown here on the label and then there's a photo of the actual power supply brick as I received it it's a CUI part one of my favorite power supply manufacturers uh, so that's one possibility if you were gonna do this this is a known good power supply and its barrel plug matches the barrel socket that comes with the kit on the circuit board. If you can lay your hands on a suitable power supply that does not match the uh, barrel connector on the circuit board, the circuit board does have a uh, set of auxiliary terminal uh, positions as shown in this photo, just two holes in the circuit board where you can connect up a uh, power supply that's just wired directly to the board without using a connector. Here's a view of the completed kit powered up and producing a small corona you can see uh, just to the upper right of the top of the coil. The wire is so fine you can't see it but you can see the little blue corona formed there and the uh, red LED is not too bright but the white LED or it's almost a bluish LED is extremely bright and rather distracting. It makes it harder to see the actual corona that you're there to see.
At this point, these heat sinks are too hot to even touch. They're just baking. This is obviously not a unit that can be used for any length of time, and it's barely audible. I have to really get the camera right next to it and strain to hear the sounds, but it is producing audible music off the Corona. Still not a very satisfactory kit, I think.